for everybody that is coming to this class and for Z for organizing everything. You're making me a little giddy this morning. And Mary, thank you so much. Um, we are lying down straight away. Um, grab your uh, bed or your strap that um, uh, you can use and lie down. Oh yes, and um, have some blocks. If you have the blocks close by, um, or some books, then have them ready. Okay. So and then just find your spot on the mat. The uh, the Earth today is Earth Day, so a happy Earth Day. <clears throat> and then just feel. All the points on your body that are connecting right now with the earth. And just scan from the top all the way down to your feet. And then see if there's maybe a difference between the left and the right side. So I feel that a little bit on my lower back and I feel that also a little bit on my shoulder blades. One shoulder blade is feeling much more relaxed on the floor. The other one feels a little pointy. And we can also feel that or maybe, you know, become aware of our hands. You know, if the palms are facing up, maybe one hand is facing more towards the side. The other one is facing up. And if you have your legs straight, you can also maybe have a look and see if your feet are where your feet are, right? So usually what happens is one is falling out a little further or a little bit out or with less effort than the other. And that's quite normal. <clears throat> if there's a big difference, then I would maybe investigate a little further, but we usually have a leg that we prefer to uh, to stand on. That's the, the standing leg. And the other one, that's the one where we, you know, kick the soccer ball or, um, I don't know what else you could kick. But so one leg is more locked or is more used to being very straight and the other one, is used to be not that straight, if that makes sense. And just feel, go all the way from the top down to the heels, to the feet. If you, if you have your legs out, stretched out, and the lower back feels a little bit tense, then it's a good idea to bend the knees straight away. And we use the earth, we use the mat today to just let go a little bit. Um, the best one, as we were just talking about with this, I teach is the earth, uh, the exhale, right? And we always do that um, with the other, or when we are in asana poses. I'm talking to most of them. <laughs> okay, so just. Bring the attention back to the breath. And don't change anything. In through the nose, out through the nose, or however you feel works best for you. Feel rising in maybe the chest or maybe the belly. Maybe you feel your shoulders moving just a little. When you exhale, feel how you can sink in or give in to gravity. Feel the weight of your body just 
Letting go into the earth. Feel the heaviness of the head, of the shoulders, of your hips. And with the next exhale, give in to that heaviness. We can also bring the hands onto the body. Breathe into the back with the next inhale. Feel the belly rising a little. With your exhale, feel the belly falling, letting go. Maybe exaggerate, exhale a little with your ujjayi breath. Ocean breath sound. Or maybe dark later breath, right? That Give in to gravity, shoulders, elbows, neck. If you feel any tension in your face, maybe you can let go of that tension too. The tension in your eyes, ears, and your tongue. The breath is getting a little shallow. And the body a little more heavy. And then slowly bring your hands right beside your body. Palms facing down. Have your feet as wide as the mat and the knees together, just for a moment. And then slowly start moving your knees left and right. Very small movement. Just a very gentle swinging of the knees to the left and right. And then let it become just a little bit bigger, but nothing crazy. And you can go as slow or as fast as you want to. Feel how the hips are lifting up just a little bit. Keep going. It's coming up just a little. Feel how your lower back gets a little bit of a movement here as well. A little bit of a twist. And then slowly let that movement become much smaller until you stop. And then walk your heels back to the midline so that your feet, your knees, your hips, your shoulders are in one line and there's space between your knees and your thighs and your calf muscles. About 
the width of your fist. And then bring the heels just a little bit closer. And then we come into some pelvic tilts. So first we focus on the breath, and then we combine the breath with the movement. So take a deep breath in, and exhale out. Inhale, and exhale. And keep going with that, and then see what comes naturally to that lower back area, right? What movement comes naturally? So there is, when we inhale, there's a tendency, right, to arch that lower back, create a space between your lower back and the mat. And then when we exhale, we go into the opposite movement. We uh, lower that arch a little bit down. And then again, arch the lower back. Create that space and then make that space disappear with your exhale. And just do a couple of them on your own. Very gentle, nothing, uh, no big movements. It should feel easy. No effort. Right. You really effort. And when you're ready, you can definitely stay here with those gentle movements um, and small movements. But if you feel like it, you can start to exaggerate that movement a little bit. So um, that inhale, you arch that lower back, you uh, let the belly become big. And then as you exhale, you flatten that lower back curve down and you actually maybe lift that tailbone come almost into a tiny mini bridge pose and then we arch again and come into that mini bridge pose lift and use your abdominals for that exhale and also to uh Protect that lower back, tightening up and lifting up the hips. All right, and find that spot that's right in between the lower back arch and that lower back pushing down the, the two um, movements. Find that space in between. A little bit of a curve, but not a huge one. And take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, tighten up those abs and start lifting into the first bridge pose. A very gentle bridge pose. You come onto the tippy tops of the shoulders. You might not tippy tops of the shoulders, but you, you push them a little bit down, okay? And then slowly roll down bone by bone by bone. So it's not about how high that bridge pose is, but how much can you feel rolling down? Can you feel the length of the spine pressing down? Imagine you are on the beach and you want to imprint your whole spine, every single vertebra, into the sand. So roll all the way up, press into the hands, arms, and your feet. And stay here and breathe. And then slowly start rolling down, take your time, nice and slow, very good. Watch out if you don't turn the head left and right, to the nice long neck, and again, take a deep breath in, arch that lower back, and as you exhale, flatten the curve down, lift the tailbone, squeeze those glutes, push your arms and your feet down, Maybe wiggle to the left and right. Come on to the tops of the shoulders. And then maybe you can lift the hips a little bit higher and feel your glutes working and your hip flexors opening up. And then slowly let the shoulders relax and roll down bone by bone by bone. 
and then relax down. And then slowly bring your knees into the chest. You can walk from side to side, stretch out the lower back just a little. <clears throat> you can rock or you can just stay here and breathe. If you like, you don't have to. You can also lift your head towards the knees, squeeze, hug the knees in and make yourself as round as possible. Keep that for a moment. Breathe and then slowly let the head go back down and let the feet go back down. <clears throat> Shake the legs out a little. And then put your hands onto the knees and circle the knees one way. Again, your choice, small movement. It can become bigger or it can stay small. And then the other way. And then separate the knees. Nice warming or opening up of the hip joints. Change the direction here as well. <clears throat> and then slowly bring your feet down. Bring your right knee into the chest and then straighten that right knee just a little. Doesn't have to be completely straight. Flex your foot, push the feet towards the sky, and then bend your knee. Point your foot and lift it back up. Flex and lower. Point and lift. Flex and lower. And then just lift the foot up. Should be easy in the knee, so you can bend the knee and then push the heel all the way up towards the sky, the toes towards you, and then point your toes towards the sky, heel down towards the earth. And then just do a couple of those for a range of motion in your ankle. So you warmed up the hips, the knee, and now the ankle. So for extension. For flexion. But always, you know, adjust to your body. If there's something that does not feel right, please don't do it. All right, so now circle your foot nice and slow so that we can see how big that circle is that we are doing. The knee wants to help a little. And then change the direction. I don't know if you can hear the noises that my ankle is making, but uh, it's actually quite impressive. <clears throat> All right, and then spread your toes and then um, flex your toes. Stretch the toes and then flex. Curl them up and then slowly put your foot back down and bring your left leg up. First, bring it into the chest and then lift it up. Like I said, it doesn't have to be that straight. We get the end you know, with the straps. So just flex the foot, push it here towards the sky and then bend the knee. Point your foot, lift it up, flex and lower. Point and lift, flex and lower, point and lift, flex and lower, and then just lift it up and we come into full flexion, full extension. Take your time.
see how that gastric means is helping you or walking, right? Pumping the blood all the way back up to the heart to get fresh oxygen. All right, and circle for a range of motion. Mm -hmm. And then the other side. And then we go to the toes, spread them out wide, curl them together. Spread them out wide, curl. The last time, spread them out wide and curl them together. And slowly lower your foot back down. If you want to shake the legs out, and now get your stretch. <clears throat> and put your uh, foot into the strap. Put the strap onto the ball of the foot so it's easier to get into that full flexion in your ankle joint. Push the heel all the way up. See if you can come into that straight knee. And if you if you can't, then that's absolutely fine. You keep it bent. But make sure you feel a little bit of an opening in the back of your leg. So you work on your, your edge. You can also see if you want to stretch out your left leg. If you do, flex that left foot. And then again, work with that. Exhale and inhale, right? So if you feel like, oh, this is this is hard work, Mandy. This is, um, you know, I can really relax. Then loosen up a little bit, right? And see if with the next exhale, you don't have to bring the knee closer or the leg closer towards you. It doesn't have to look like my leg at all, but you can relax the forehead and the tongue in your mouth. You can relax maybe the belly or your shoulders and your elbows, right? Feel the weight of your arms. And whenever you are ready, if you want to come with me, then we go to the outside. So bring your straps into the right hand, left hand can go onto the left hip. It doesn't have to, it can go over to the side or onto your belly, whatever works for you. Keep flexing your feet if your uh, left foot is stretched out. If your left knee is bent, um, See if you can glue that left hip down and don't let it escape, right? Don't let the knee escape. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of cheating, putting my foot into the bookshelf, but well, that's just what it is today, right? So stretch, if you um, stretch the left leg out, flex that left foot, bring your leg back to the middle and then over to the other side. <clears throat> Small movement, it's not a big range of motion. Make sure both hips are on the floor, both shoulders are on the floor, and you are still able to breathe easy. Slowly, slowly bring the leg back to the middle, take the strap off, and we switch to the other side. Flex the foot, push the heel towards the sky. And see where you can let go of some tension. Shoulders, face, tongue. And you only work towards straight. It does not have to be straight. And then stretch out. The leg, if you feel that's an option. Mm -hmm. And slowly 
both straps into the left hand, right hand on the right hip or right beside the body, and then open your left leg to the side. And uh, again, you can totally skip that and just stay straight if this is maybe um, aggravating your hip or there's any issue, um, then just stay with the leg straight up and just breathe there. Relax the right shoulder. Soften the right shoulder. Allow the right shoulder to become heavy. And then slowly bring the leg back to the middle. And if you feel like it, you can bring it over to the other side. Now relax that left shoulder. Slowly bring the leg back to the middle, bend the knee, take the strap off. Reclined pigeon. So we, at the end, we come into that king pigeon pose. And um, for some of us, that's not a nice pose. There's too much pressure for the knee or maybe the hip. So we have then the option to modify and this this would be then one of the modifications so your right foot goes onto the left knee you bring your hands behind your left thigh and then push your left knee gently into that right ankle you can push the um you know your elbow against your right uh, leg to push that right knee out a little bit but uh, you can also just Use the muscles in your right leg to push that right knee away from you. <laughs> so left knee pushes in, right knee pushes out. And then slowly release and switch over to the other side. Bring the right knee in and the left knee out. Relax the neck, the chin. Have some space between the ears and your shoulders. And slowly lower the leg back down. And shake the legs. Shake the legs out a little bit. All right, and then bring the knees into the chest and cross your ankles. And then hold on to the tops of your feet, the knees open up, and you just push your um, the toes down, lift the heels up. Slowly lower back down. Then just switch the, um, the legs. But for me, it's left leg on top. And then same thing, you push the heels up and um, have your hands on top of the toes of your feet, the back of the feet, and just push that up. And slowly lower back down, shake it out. And then we cross uh, the right over the left knee. Same thing, we lift up, we hold onto the ankles, bring the ankles towards us. So now you should feel this more in your hips. Breathe here. Again, if that does not feel good, you can absolutely skip this one. Slowly lower back down. We switch, left goes over the right knee and we bring the knees into the chest 
and slide all the way to the ankles and then lift the legs. Maybe you want to flex those feet and then bring your ankles towards you. And then slowly, slowly bring your feet back down and just open up your feet as wide as the mat. Bring the knees back together and we come back to that swaying to the left and to the right. So there's two options here. You can keep doing this. You can also just take a break and just uh, come into stillness with the knees resting on each other. You can really nice for the lower back. Or you come into that moving, into the motion, left and right. So both knees are going into the same direction. <clears throat> Big movement in your lower back. <clears throat> and then we use that heaviness, gravity. We bring both knees over to one side. So again, you can use your blocks and maybe put one block underneath. Maybe if you have your legs over onto the right, put it underneath your right knee. And if you feel comfortable and everything is okay, then focus on the breath. And with your next exhale, Focus on letting go down into the earth. Let gravity help you, pulling you down. Don't push down. Just let the body do and the breath do what they want to do, right? And if it doesn't feel okay, if the gravity is pulling you or the weight of your legs is pulling you a little too far and you think like, no, this is not okay, then come back out, listen to that feeling. You can either put something underneath it to support your knees or come into a resting pose. If you feel like, yeah, this is all very nice, Mandy, but you know what, I would like a little more. You can put your right foot on top of the left knee and use that extra weight to pull that left knee a little lower. This is pretty intense. So if you're hard to do this and then you realize, ah, no, then please listen to that. Come out of that. Then slowly, if your foot is right on the knee, then take the foot off and slowly bring both knees back to the middle. So first, yeah, bring your feet out as wide as the mat, bring your knees together, find that, um, you know, even out to the hips. And then again, we go into that swaying left and right. You take your time. And again, I'm adjusting my left foot. So I was, I had my knees on the right side. So now I'm going over to the left. I'm bringing my left foot, my left heel a little bit in towards the midline so that when my left knee falls to the side or if I'm gently lowering my left knee to the floor, um, it feels okay. There's no twist in my ankle. <clears throat> The shoulders are both, both shoulders are on the floor. If your left, um, if your um, if your knees are over to the left and your right shoulder is lifting up, probably a little too much. <clears throat> and again, if you feel easy, if this is, you know, um, you want a little more of a challenge, or you want, you know, a little bit, you put that left foot on top of the right knee. And this side might feel different, right? 
and then listen to that too. Take a deep breath in. With the exhale, give in to Earth's gravity. Let it pull you down. Let it become heavy. Let your legs, your muscles get heavy. And then slowly lift the knees, adjust your hips, lower back, even out on the mat. You can lift it up a little bit. Perfect. And then come onto the side and you come up into a seated position. I know you might not want to, <laughs> but um, we are going back to the floor in no time. Okay. So, um, if you, uh, maybe that's a good idea, yes. So, if you have a blanket, if you have something where you can sit on, it might not be necessary, but see if you have it close by, use it. And again, if you sit on something, slide a little to the edge so that your hips are tilting forward and you find that length in your spine. And then see, hold on to your um, leg. Rocking the baby, right? Just a very gentle movement. <clears throat> and if this is already a really hard thing to do, then keep doing that, right? If you feel like, yeah, that's quite all right. You want it a little bit. You want a little bit more. You can hook your elbow underneath and bring that um, shin bone a little closer towards you. If you feel like you can sit tall, you're rounding there crazy, maybe it's a little too much, and go back to just very gently moving. Okay. Now we go to the other side. Adjust again, right? Find that length, and then your choice. All the way down here. <clears throat> or bring it a little bit closer. And again, this other leg might feel a little different. You can move it or just hold it. So play around. Find what feels good right now. <clears throat> All right, let's move a little. So come on to hands and knees into table pose. <laughs> hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath, <laughs> underneath your hips. And then just gently move the spine into both directions, all the way up and all the way down. Drop the belly, lift the head, arch that lower back. And then with your exhale, if that works, squeeze the abs in and up and open up the chest, lift the head, drop the belly. And then find a neutral spine, tuck your toes under, and let's finally downward facing dog. Open up the head, spread it those legs. Find that lift in the sit bones all the way up towards the sky, push the heels towards the floor. You don't have to touch. Keep the knees bent if that's good, but keep the sit bones lifting up high. And then come back onto the toes, lower back down, onto the knees, untuck the toes and come onto the belly. Have your head uh, for, um, um, <laughs> your forehead on the floor and then lift the shoulders 
and maybe untuck the toes, lift your right leg, push it out, make it longer, lift your left leg, push it out and make it longer. Lift your abs. Create a pocket of air between the abs and your and the floor. And then with your next inhale, lift gently into cobra. Feel your lower back working, feel the upper back working. Slowly lower back down. With your next inhale, lift back up into Bhujangasana. Shoulders away from the ears, long neck, slowly lower back down. Tuck your toes under, push into your hands and back into um, child pose. Open up the knees wide, toes are together. And maybe move from the left to the right, stretch into your hands and then come back into table. And from table into downward dog, don't mind me. <clears throat> Tuck the toes under, lift all the way up, reach up high. Come onto the toes, lower back down onto table and slide your right foot forward. And you can use your blocks <clears throat> or if your hands are comfortable on the floor, then have them on the floor. So wiggle the foot a little bit forward and then lower your hips, open up the chest. If you like, you can stay down here. You can also put the hands onto the knees, lift, them. lift the upper body away and reach up into a low lunge. Drop the shoulders. Lower your hands back down. Now again, use your blocks if you want to. And we are moving the hips back, straightening the front knee and lifting the front foot, hands um, on the blocks underneath your shoulders. And you can stay here, you can also Forward, forward, keep your foot flexed. Can you move back up? And forward, back down, try forward in front of your hip. And come back up. And walk your blocks forward and lower the hips one more time. Hands onto the knee if you like, or up into the air if you like. Reach up high. Ujjayi breath, lower your hands down onto the floor, slide your right foot back. Tuck the toes under, come back into downward facing dog. See if you can see the difference between the left and the right. And slowly onto the toes, back down onto the knees. Left foot slides in between. <clears throat> Wiggle the foot forward so you have that space. Yes, I can see. And then lower your hips down. Use the blocks, use your books, whatever you have. That supports you. You can bring the hands onto the knees, push the knee away. You can also lift your arms, drop your shoulders, reach up high. Lift your gaze. Lower your hands back down on the floor, on the blocks. Bring the hips back, lift that foot. Hands are underneath your shoulders, right? And you can definitely stay here. You can also forward, forward. And lift back up. Forward, forward, easier with your exhale. Lift back up. Hands forward, lower your hips. Hands onto the hip, onto the knee if you like, push it away. Lift your arms, opening up the right hip. Lower your hands back down. Onto the floor, slide the left foot back and you come into downward facing dog. Lift 
all the way. Reach up high. Walk your feet forward. And let your side hang down here. Bend the knees, create space in between your vertebrae. Use the heaviness of the head and your arms. And slowly roll up. Take your time. Scoop your abs in and out. Keep the knees bent. Press into your feet and let the abs lift you up into mountain pose. Open up the chest. <clears throat> Palms facing forward. <clears throat> lift your arms from here. Reach up high. And sit in chair pose. Now feel if you are arching that lower back out, right? You stick that butt out a little bit and try to do the opposite. So you squeeze the abs and up and we lengthen it here. Find a good stretch here. Bring the hands in front of your chest. The weight into your right leg. Slide the left back into a high lunge. Hands onto your hips or an under the mudra, whatever you feel you will really stay there with. And then bend your left knee, give the chance for the um, lower back to lengthen down, scoop the abs in and out. Try to keep that and maybe use your thumbs, right? Push that down and then straighten your knee, lift your arm. Come into warrior two, bring the back here down, open up the hips. Bend your front elbow, lift your left arm over your head. If you're sinking in, lift up out of it. Try to keep the weight here and don't push into the knee too much. If you feel like the knee is coming out of that bend, lower the hip. You come into a birth warrior. Lift your arms into warrior two. Back hand goes down, front hand flips. Open up, reach up high. Straighten your front knee, reach up towards the sky. And then come back, arm lowers down, hands onto your hips, and step forward. <clears throat> Shake everything out. Other side, come into mountain pose, arms facing forward, soften your knees, lengthen your tailbone down, scoop the abs in and up along neck. Look at the horizon, the line of the horizon, push through the top of your head, and then lift your arms. Spread your fingers wide, sit in your chair pose. Breathe. Scoop the abs in and up, lengthen that tailbone. Bring your hands in front of your chest. Bring the weight into your left. Slide your right foot back. High lunge, either hands onto the hips or an angel mudra. <clears throat> Imagine that whole horizon. Bend the knee, lengthen the tailbone down. Scoop the abs up, you come into that pelvic tear that we did right at the beginning, right? So imagine the earth is right in your lower back and you're pushing against it. Try to keep this a little bit and then straighten that back knee. Heel is up in the air. Lift your arms. Reach up. You should feel that nice opening in the front of your right hip. And then we come into one or two by putting that right hip right here down, opening the hips, adjust your feet. Come into that warrior two that is comfortable for you. Bend your elbow, lift your right arm over. Reach, press your right foot down. 
Come back into warrior two. Reverse, flip the front hand open, right hand onto the back leg, lift. Keep your left knee bent. Breathe. Straighten that front knee, reach up towards the sky, not towards the wall, up. And then bring your hand back down onto the hip. And then here, turn your way back together <clears throat> for King Dancer. <clears throat> Hold on to something or not, your choice. You know what? Be close to something that you can hold on just in case. So bring your left foot up. Again, if this is really hard, right? Use your towel. The towel is actually probably nicer or easier than the strap. And then put the foot inside. And see, if you're here and you feel like that's, that's pretty intense, and your knee is maybe here, and you feel like, mm, push the knee back a little bit. Use the weight of your foot to open up the chest here, to open up the hip flexor here, right? So that is King Dancer, <clears throat> just a modification. If you're here, push the foot into the hand, to the opening of your back, left side. I feel it in my knee. And then if you feel like if you can keep pushing the knee, uh, the foot into your hand and keep lifting the knee, your choice. Lower your upper body a little bit just for the counterweights. Spread your fingers wide. Look at something that is not moving. And slowly. Lower your knee down and put your foot back down. Other side. <clears throat> Use the sling or you know the strap, the towel, whatever it is you have, and hold your foot up. Relax. <sighs> Lift through the top of your head. And then if you feel like your hip, you know, sometimes if we do this, we lean into that other hip. Put that back up, right? Lift through the whole body. <clears throat> and then do your, your king dancer. Look at something that is not moving. Lift the other arm. Maybe unlock that knee, the left knee, and keep pushing the foot into the hands. And lower the upper body. And if you feel you lose balance, you find it again. <clears throat> I know I'm going all the time again. I'm so sorry, Satish. <laughs> Slowly, whoa. I hope you're more graceful than I just did. Lower everything back down. Come to the front of the mat. Lift the arms and fold forward, hands in front of the chest. Press the hands together. Unlock the knees, scoop the abs up. Slowly forward, forward. And come into downward dog. <clears throat> Head the legs. And then lower your knees back down. Okay, so. Lean back and just listen for a moment, sit back if you can. So I'll show you quickly the two other options. The first option was recline pigeon that we did at the beginning. So if this is your choice today, beautiful. Remember you put your right knee on top of the left knee for the thigh and then bring your leg in. That is one version, and then you do the same thing on the other side. <clears throat> the second version is seated, where we want a very long spine, proud chest, and then bring your right foot on top of your left knee. If you need to you push it towards the uh, same side corner of the mat, and open up the chest, 
and you can lift that left foot and dig the heel into the floor. Your feet are different. If you slouch and then come out of that slouch, opening up the chest, you feel that in the hip. Stay here, breathe, and then when you switch to the other side, you switch to the other side. And at any time in between, if you feel like you're ready for Shavasana already, then just set yourself up and we meet you there. If you are in for that pigeon pose, you can come in here from different um, poses as well. So of course, down your dog, right? You lift up here. You can come in from Taylor, whatever you feel like. All right, so I'm just going in from Taylor and we're sliding the right knee all the way behind the right wrist. So there is many ways um, that I have been uh, taught. So one is to wiggle so that the goal is that your shin bone has to be parallel to the front of the mat. I have never ever been able to do that and I, I don't think I will. Um, uh, listen to your body. If you are there and you can do that, fantastic. If not, don't sweat it, right? Again, support. I should have done the other side so you can see it. <clears throat> All right. So you can put your block underneath um, your glute and sit on it and you can stay here. Then wiggle your leg back so that it's straight, it doesn't fall to the left and the right. And as I said, you can stay here and just breathe. You can also, as you probably know, walk onto your elbows and you can stay here. You can use the other block to rest your head and just breathe here. And of course, you can have the block there all the way up. You can lower it down, whatever feels comfy. Those blocks are pretty magic. So you can also use your hands. If you want to come all the way down, that's uh, your choice. Sometimes the kneecap gets a little bit irritated. So I'm just tucking my toes under my knees and my knees and hands to kind of find that. Um, Take the pressure off a little bit. And then just stay here and breathe. And again, with your exhale, try to soften into the earth, into your mat. Whatever version of pigeon pose you chose, be there and breathe. One more big inhale and big exhale. Slowly bring the elbows in if you are on the floor and then bring your hands underneath your shoulders and then tuck the back toes under, lift up, come into table. From table into downward dog. <clears throat> And then if you came from downward dog, then you can bring your other knee behind that wrist. If you want table, bring your other knee behind the same side wrist. And then walk or let your knee back. Have a look back, see what the back leg is doing. And then again, if you feel like that block was, was good, then put the block back there. And again, you can stay here. <clears throat> and breathe here. You can also use the blocks or just come back down into your pigeon pose. One more big full inhale and big full exhale. You can stay here a little bit longer. I know I could. 
So we are ready for Shavasana, right? So slowly lift back up out of your pigeon pose and then just come into the wherever you are, um, except if you are already in Shavasana. <clears throat> and if not, and if you're in table, swing the legs around and stretch your legs all the way out. You can into a small twist. <laughs> Take the fleshy parts of the sit bones, find that staff pose. Hands to the side, make those little hands. Push through the top of the head. <clears throat> Bring your right knee in. Bring it over to the other side. Wrap your left arm around. Take a deep breath in. Lengthen and then come into your twist. Hug your knee in and breathe. Slowly untwist. Stretch it back out. Find that step, pose again. And then bring your left knee in, over to the other side. Wrap your arm around your left knee. Bring your right hand, no, your left hand behind you. Go tall, and then come into your twist. Hug your left knee in. And slowly and stretch it back out and find your shavasana. <clears throat> Put your socks on, your eye pillow on, have a blanket. If you feel like you don't want a blanket to cover you because it's getting too warm, you can use it as a weight just over your belly. If you feel like you want to have the legs up the wall or up your chair, go for that. <clears throat> and whenever you are, whenever you are ready, and take a deep breath in through the nose and exhale out with a sigh out the mouth. <sighs> Everything is done, nothing more to do. Let the floor, let the earth hold you, support you, give in to gravity with every exhale. And then move your attention down down to your feet. Relax your toes and your ankles. Soften the calf muscles and the back of your knees. the top of the knees. Your thighs and hamstrings. Glutes and hips. And with your next exhale, allow yourself, allow your legs to become heavy. It's 
soft in the belly and your chest. Soft in your lower back, middle back, upper back. Soft in the shoulders, elbows, wrists, all ten fingers. And with your next exhale, allow your arms to become heavy. Soften the back of the neck, the back of the head, the top of your head. Your forehead, temples, cheekbones. your ears, your jaw, soften the tongue in your mouth, your lips, your eyes, and the space between your eyebrows.
Now slowly, without changing anything, bring your attention to the noises outside. Birds, the wind, cars. Slowly move that attention to the noises inside your room. And then slowly move that attention closer to your body, to the sound of your breath. And again, feel all the points where your body is touching the earth. And then slowly start wiggle your toes and your fingers. Stretch your arms and stretch your legs. Slow and gentle. When you're ready, Bend one knee and bend the other. Move onto your right side. Make a pillow with your arm. And when you're ready. Push yourself up into a seated position. You can keep your eyes closed if you like, or you can open them. Bring the hands in front of your chest. Lower the chin towards your chest. And thank yourself for coming here this morning. I thank you for coming. Namaste.